Joining Coach Kennan today are seniors Josh Sellers and Jordan Hicks. Both are preseason second team all-conference selections. Josh at linebacker and Jordan as a punt returner who also plays wide receiver. We'd also like to acknowledge that uh, UIW SID Shane Melling is here to assist you with any uh, questions or concerns you may have or uh, assistance. Uh, Coach Kennan, if you'd like to uh, get us started with an opening statement about the upcoming season. Great. Uh, can you all hear me? Thanks, thanks for being here. This is always an, an impressive deal for us. We, we enjoy coming here. Um, last year we had a kind of a miraculous season. We went from two and nine to six and five, and we were five and four in the conference and finished fourth in the conference. And, and so we made some progress, and we're our, our, kind of our motto is progress, not perfection. We're, we're striving to get better each year. Uh, we, we're not anywhere near being there. Uh, we have recruited extremely hard in the in the San Antonio, Dallas, Houston areas, uh, and and we've 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 said we want to get guys who are really good students, really good people, and really good football players. And we have two guys here that fit that bill. They were recruited four years ago in our really our first recruiting class. The first class was we were hired in, in late December, so we. We had a smaller class that year, but this was our first real class. And two, two of the guys, when we signed both of these guys, we were thrilled that we got them because we had nobody like them in our program. You know, when it, both, both could run, both were great students, uh, both were really good football players. Uh, we feel, you know, I always say, and, and years ago when I coached at, at Lamar in the Southland Conference, the first thing that, that I noticed when I, when I got to Lamar was that that this was a, a great league uh, for coaches. Coaches in this league know how to f coach football. They know how to recruit. Everybody's tough. There, there's no gimme games. There's no easy games. Everybody is extremely well coached. They have good athletes. There's plenty of athletes in, in Louisiana, Texas, and Arkansas to go around. And, and there's outstanding players. You know, this year we had two of our players signed with teams in the National Football League the first two guys we've ever had uh, who've gotten to that, that far, and I, I think they'll both make it. Cole Wick, our tight end, and Mike Tavares, our outside linebacker. So, so we're thrilled with that. And so we, we're making progress in, in all areas. We had a, a great year <coughs> athletically. We also had an outstanding year academically. And, and I'm going to stop talking and let the, the other guys talk and then get to the, the real nitty gritty, and that's the questions you have for us. So. Josh, if you want to give us a, your thoughts on the upcoming season. Uh, well, I mean, guys, all summer we was talking about perfection. You know, we, we shoot our goals to be high. You know, <clears throat> in the future, or if possible this season, we would like to win a conference championship. That's always the mindset. But like Coach said, you got to lay the foundation down first. And uh, this upcoming season, I feel like. Speak, this, speak up. I'm oh, sorry. This upcoming season, I feel the sky's the limit. And. I can't, I can't express to you how much, how bad guys wanted this season. Uh, last year just was a little taste of success, and guys want more. So this season, <laughs> just look, tune in because UIW football is going to bring some impressive things. Jordan, thoughts on the upcoming season? Uh, just to add on to what uh, Josh Sellers and uh, my head coach, Coach Kennan, said. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank Coach Kennan for having me here, uh, Southland Conference for having me here. It's a blessing to be here. Um, uh, we finished fourth in the conference last year, uh, which is uh, you know, you know, better than what we did the year before, uh, going to and on, which is not really where we want to be. But we're we're getting better, you know, like, just like Coach Kennedy said, we're we're progressing, uh, striving for perfection. Uh, obviously, practice makes perfect, so we uh, take every practice like it's our last, and uh, just do everything we can to to hopefully get better. And as Josh said, you know, we're, you know, you got to lay the foundation for it. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, stuff just doesn't fall from the sky. You have to, you have to grind for it. So that's what we're doing. We're grinding all summer. You know, hopefully this season we're going to have a better, improve on our six and five season, and you know, we're going to contend for the conference. You know, when, when, uh, and let me add one thing to that. When we were getting ready to come here, Jordan said, "Coach, is there anything I, I can't say?" At the, at the meetings, I said, well, like what? He said, well, can I, can I say that we want to c contend for the conference championship? And I said, if that's what you believe, then absolutely, because what am I going to do? Tell him, don't have high expectations? 
And, and so, you know, if, if you have high expectations, you've got to manage those expectations. Mm -hmm. But what the heck? I mean, let's, let's shoot for the moon and, and go after it. Let's dream a little bit. Why not? Okay, we do have microphones on the floor, so if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone and just identify yourself and your uh, news agency. Hi, Gabe Fuddy, uh, SA Sports Live and the Texas Sports Radio Network. Coach, <clears throat> fifth year in, uh, talk about the progress of the UIW program, specifically this year. Uh, I believe 15 starters back, two winning seasons out of the last three, uh, a fourth place finish in last year's conference. Uh, Record, talk about what your expectations are. Talk about UIW this year. You know, uh, and, and I say this, uh, and I, I make some of the guys who played five years ago mad when I say it, but, you know, four seasons ago, we were a bad Division II team. And then two years ago, we were a bad Division One AA team. Now we're a decent Division One AA team, and we're making progress. On offense, we've got to replace a left tackle and a tight end, and on defense, we need to replace a couple guys in the secondary and an outside linebacker who was arguably, the, we thought, the best defensive player in the league. Uh, so we, there's some big shoes to fill, but we've got a lot of guys back, and, and we have uh, a lot of guys who've, who've worked really hard to, to make us be somebody. You know, we talk about, uh, I was talking to the McNeese guys, you know, and and somebody said, why, why didn't you beat McNeese? Well, McNeese has played football for 107 years and won 14 or 15 Southland Conference championships. We've only played football for seven years, you know, and so we don't have that, that great tradition that, that they have and a lot of people have, but that's okay because these guys came here and I came to the UIW to make tradition, and that's, that's what we're shooting for. So we have high expectations always for our guys, and, and we, want, we want the very best for them. So we coach them hard, and and they play hard and hope that good things happen. I see Morrell, Port Arthur News. Um, what do you think led to your turnaround last year uh, from 2-9 to 6-5, and five? and how did those two guys uh, flanking you uh, play a big part in that? What, what really happened was, you know, the year before we lost our quarterback on the 10th play of the first game and didn't have an adequate replacement for him. Last year we got him back healthy, but we also, we've recruited better each year, each of the five years we've recruited. So each class has been better than the one before that. And what's happened is we've got really solid guys like Josh Sellers and Jordan Hicks who are, who are good football players, they're good people. They're good students. We got a whole bunch of those kind of guys in our program, and we're not we're not there yet. We can't match three or four of the teams as far as overall personnel, but we're getting a lot closer to them, and it's it's progress. You just keep working at it, and and, and if you if you do the right thing and recruit the right kind of guys, and and we have we have an absolutely outstanding coaching staff. I promise you, these guys, our coaching staff, could coach at any level: NFL, Texas A and M, wherever. It's a and like like everybody else in this league has outstanding coaches, and we have good players. That's and and if you just keep on keeping on, and you got good character, then you got a chance. Josh, right quick, um, uh, you, you heard Coach Cannon talk about the history of some of the schools, most of the schools in the Southland Conference, how long they've been playing football versus how long UIW has been playing football. Talk about, as you are a senior this year, uh, what it's been like to be a part of the building of, of, of a program and a conference that's, that's as tough as, as this one. You know, talk about being a part of building that program. Um, it was a privilege, sir. I mean, in high school, my high school coach basically compared the Southland Conference to the SEC of the big Division I school. So to be able to be a new program, to be a fresh start, you know, and it's just opportunity, and the opportunity you gotta grab it. You know, you gotta make the most out of it, and that's all. I, that's all I really wanted was opportunity, just to make history, to make tradition, and just to do big things. And I, I, I thank God every day for this opportunity. And uh, start from I, I seen UIW raised from the from the start because my brother he played on the Forever First team, and I've seen how it's transformed in and to to today, and it's miraculous. With only what, seven years of football, it's, it just sets the tone for what possibly could happen in the future. Hey, 
Coach, just one clarification. Did you say uh, your quarterback went down the 10th play of the season last year or when we were talking about um, how you got better guys? Is that up to you? Is that even the point? Yeah. Two years ago. Okay. Two years ago, our quarterback got hurt on the 10th play of the first game, and so we had no adequate replacement, so we ended up being 2-9, and nine, and it was a long season. And, and, but, but, but I was so proud because we just kept fighting and fighting and fighting, and, and that's all we know how to do is just, just fight. You know, my, my, my wife told me the other day, she said, you've been fighting your whole life. She said, when are you going to stop? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. That's just the way we are, you know, and, and, and I'm so proud of our guys because, you know, I, I get to tell them every day I love them, and I, and I also tell them I don't always like them, but I always love them, and, and, and that's the way it is, you know, and, and, and I get to, to watch Josh Zellers and Jordan Hicks and a whole bunch of other guys come to our school, and they're good people, and watch them grow up and get a degree and go out there and be somebody and go out to practice and every day lay it on the line, and, and, and it's, it's a fabulous Somebody asked me this morning, you know, you've been coaching at all levels. Did, did you like the NFL better? And I said, no, this is my favorite job ever because I get to do it exactly as I want to do it. And I've got enough experience that, that, that there's nothing I haven't seen in, in, in athletics. And I get to work with guys like this. I mean, what a treat. I mean, absolute treat. Hey, uh, Jordan, right quick. Um, the expectations of the UIW offense, for a lot of people that don't know, are very high. You got skilled players back at receiver. Every key receiver that was on the team last year is back. You have your starting quarterback back. I think you have all but one offensive lineman back this year. Um, you know, outside of, of, of Cole Wick not being a part of this team, all three running backs are back. What are the expectations for the offense this year? Um, Obviously, uh, it's ex going to be an exciting time for the offensive side of the football. Well, I, always on offense, you know, you ha you always have to expect big things. You know, you you have to have your you know you have your defense. You know, they they stop them, and then you know, offense and go to scores. That's how you win the game. So you know, uh, we lost Cole Wick, unfortunately, uh, to the NFL, and, and you know, he has big shoes, really big shoes. I don't, I think he wears what a size 16, 15. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's big shoes to fill, but you know they're gonna get filled. You know, next guy up, um, replace him. Replace him, and we'll be all right. And we have, like you said, we have all our receivers coming back: uh, Cody Edwards, uh, Ahmad Johnson. Uh, we have some. We have some freshmen coming in that we recruited. We recruited nicely at the wide receiver position. So you know, we got some explosive guys on offense, and we're gonna make big plays this year. We expect to make big plays this year. Um, you know, we expect to run the ball this year. Uh, we're, we're just going to do do what we do. Uh, our game plan is, is going to stay the same, uh, and we're we're going to make plays on on offense, and uh, how, hopefully our defense will help us out, and uh, we're going to win games. That's a, that's a, that's the plan. That's what we're going to do. Josh Alexicki, Lake Charles American Press. Um, the stats Mike Tavares put together last year on defense they don't even seem real in some ways because I mean. He compiled so many tackles, tackles for loss, everything you can think of. Uh, I know you don't have the exact same duties on defense, but you know what do you have to do to sort of bring that intensity as the, the leader of the linebacking core this year and I guess as the defense as a whole? Uh, I, ca I can't come to tone, I guess you could say. Uh, just come ready to play, be physical at every point of attack, and just be ready to lead, you know, just don't be scared to speak what's on my mind because, I mean, I can't force anything, you know. I, if God's going to want it, God's going to want it, but I feel like I have a good group of guys that is, they're going to ride for me. Whatever I say or whatever I, whatever I lead, they're going to follow. And defensively, I just feel like as long as guys are all in, as long as, my, including myself, and as long as we're doing our jobs as individuals, uh, we'll be fine and we'll replicate or even improve on what we did last Coach, uh, how do you feel about the, the defense and being able to, if not his production single-handedly, I guess collaboratively being able to make up for the impact of Tavares graduating? Well, you know, you, you, you can't replace Mike Tavares because what he did was phenomenal. You know, he was a, he was a, a, a great leader besides. He was a, a very emotional leader and he, he helped us. But we're, we're 
you know, we're better, really better at every position on defense. You know, we've got a, a, a couple of defensive linemen that redshirted a year ago, an outside linebacker that redshirted. We've got, you know, some, some and, and we're young, and we, we lost almost, you know, we lost three or four guys who played uh, quite a bit for us, and that's all. And, and so we're going to be a better defense. And we were, we were in the state of Texas the number one defense for yards g allowed per game. We were first in, in the state of Texas on defense. So we had a solid defense. Uh, we weren't great. We're going to be a whole lot better on defense, uh, although we don't have a guy like Mike Tavares who can make those huge plays for us. But guys like Josh and, and, and Greg Lemon and, and Eric England and Corey Lee, who's coming back off being hurt, they can make some plays. And so we do it as a team, which is the way we want to do it anyway. Coach, uh, 15 starters back, two winning seasons in, in, in three years. Um, coaches picked you ninth, SIDs picked you eighth heading in. Uh, is that, is that, do you think that's just still growing pains with the conference? You think that's overlooked? How do you explain something like that? When you finish fourth, you got everyone coming back just about, and you still picked eighth or, and ninth in the conference heading in? Yeah, well, you, maybe, I don't know. You know, I don't worry about stuff like that. You know, it's like I, I you know, we're picked eighth or ninth, and, and, and maybe legitimately that's where we ought to be. I don't know. That, that's, we'll find out at the end of the year. You get to look at it at the end and say, okay, here's how we finished, and who cares how, how, how we were picked. Uh, this is a hard league. There's, there's five or six truly outstanding Division I AA programs in every area. Gr great facilities, great tradition, great players, great coaches. Uh, uh, some of the rest of us are, are just trying to catch up to them and, 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 and be able to compete with them. But this is, this is a hard league. I mean, to be picked eighth or ninth, it's, it's better than being picked tenth or eleventh, say that. Because there's nobody in this league that that's even resembles a gimme. You'd like to have a couple games you can look down the schedule and say, yeah, we ought to win that one. But, but there's nothing like that on, any, on our schedule. Now, there might be on some other people's schedules. Some of them may look at us and say, yeah, that's a gimme. But we don't have any. Uh, Coach, um, last question for me is, what are your thoughts on the, the push to go to 12 games by, uh, led by the commissioner for the regular season? Say that on the 12th? Yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on the, the conference's move to try to make the regular season 12 games? I, I like it. I, I think it's, it's really good. You know, I, I, I think that, if, if you, you don't want to do too many games, but uh, because these are student athletes, but 12 games is, I think the guys would like it. It would give us a chance to have six home games, which we all strive for. You know, the, the interesting thing in this, there were four out of 11 teams last year had winning records. And the, and the reason we don't in this conference is because we play such a brutal non-conference schedule that we get beat up there and then we play each other and it's hard to win. But, you know, four out of 11 having winning records, it's, it's hard. And, uh, you know, but 12 games, I, I, I think that's a good deal. It, it, it makes us more like the FBS and, and uh, that's what we're all looking for. I follow up to the, the guys. Uh, you know, Coach says he thinks they would like it. So would, would you guys be in favor of adding one more game to your season? I wouldn't mind it, honestly, because as it is, we already don't play, I want to say, Central Arkansas. So it would give us the opportunity to play everybody in our conference and basically leave no prisoners, you know. So everybody gets, gets a shot at each other, and I, would, yeah, I wouldn't mind it at all. I honestly don't see anything wrong with it either. It just, you know, when you get to the, the fourth year and you're a senior, you're, you're thinking back, you're wishing you had all these different games back well. You extend it to 12 games, you know, you're a senior, you're like, okay, well, I have that extra game to where I can go play my hardest and, and really leave it all out on the field like, I, like, you, like you really want to. So I'm, I'm all for the, uh, the 12 game schedule. All for it. Yeah, they'd rather play games than practice all the time or lift weights <laughs> anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs>
one of the reasons I brought, brought seniors is because, you know, one, one of the things I say to a lot of them is, you know, my, my father was a great man and before he passed, he said, he said, look, he said, this life goes fast, enjoy it. And so I get to say to them, because I remember the first time I saw each one of these guys in, in recruiting, you know, he, he was, Jordan came to a camp and, and I sat up in the press box, his mom was up in the press box and, and uh, it goes fast, you know, and think back, you know, to four years ago, you, you guys were freshmen and all of a sudden now it's their last go around. And they put a lot of time and effort into this and, and let's go, let's go see what happens.